for me while while being parky i really didn't feel that i think it was the most natural character that i've played on screen there is no one size fits all with with actors and that was very clear to me from that moment saying that every actor has a different process when a person meets me for the first time the first thing they tell me is we loved you in lutera it was the look you gave salman and dabang on that role nice. <laughs> <laughs> i was like man this girl like she's the one hawa ke jhoke aaj mausam se uth gaye gulo ki shokhiyan jo bhavre aake loot gaye So, ten years of Lutera. Yeah. I mean, it seems to have its own cult now. I was just telling him. I was like, look at the amount of love this movie gets, even today. It's insane. I've I've not experienced anything like it for any other film, actually. So, well done, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Vikram is looking the most. Good surprised. job, ah, good job. <laughs> well, yeah, considering what happened, I mean, not what happened, just like during the making. I think ten years ago, it's it's twelve years ago, actually, almost. It was like, right. So t- no, tell us a little bit about that, about that making. Oh, different. I mean, different era. I think. I think uh, streaming wasn't there. I think uh, the the chances you could take in theatrical for movies, the chances you did take uh, in theatrical for movies, are very different from what it is right now. Um, and I think that was, you know, it was still a risky film. It was still something that we were like, you know, part of me, I was like, oh my god, I've made Uran, which is this small little film, and now I'm doing, you know, Ranvi Sonakshi. It's a big one period um so yeah i was kind of panicky through it but um, it was a phenomenal experience with, with both of them and um it was great fun also it must have been a hard pitch right when you say the last leaf which is like just a few pages long and you want to adapt that into this sweeping romance like is that something people understood straight away or was you know i think the hook of the the hook of the book i mean not even it's a, yeah four it's a four page short story mm. but the hook is so powerful that that's exactly what keeps it hooks you i mean it hooked me as a as a filmmaker to say okay this is such a great story and i think that was the same hook that got everybody excited about it you know so that between me and bhavani ayer when we were writing it or after writing it when we were pitched it you know narrated to uh, sona or to ranveer or to producers or to ekta kapoor or anybody there was a sense of like once you come to what the meat is and everybody's like oh this is beautiful this is great we're in you know so uh, that was that i think that's the core of the story was just very powerful right i think i said yes to it on the same day that i heard it or yeah. while you were at the meeting i think he had not even left my house and i was like yes i have to do this film and uh, then of course i had certain people around me and like you know people who advise you and all everybody around me said do not do this film <laughs> So I said, "Why? <laughs> I liked it. I mean, the narration was really, really nice. It touched me. It moved me. I was, you know, I was feeling something while while he was narrating the film to me. So what's wrong with that?" He's like, "No, you know, you're in the middle of all these big commercial uh, pot boilers, and you know, you have to do big films, big films, big films." Um, then somebody said, "Oh no, you know, to carry off a role like this, you have to be a very mature actress." So I said, "Acha, to me, lagta hai, nahi kar sakti. Ab to me karungi." But uh, yeah, I think uh, I just went with the voice in my head, which told me that you know roles like this are uh, don't come along easily. Sure. And to be able to have that so early on in my career, I think it was my third or fourth film that I started shooting for. Fourth, yeah, fourth film which I started shooting for, and um, so early on in my career to get a role like that, I was like, you know what, boss, I have to have to do this no matter what anyone tells me, and I'm so glad I did. <laughs> Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> no, we all are. It's a great performance. But if from that first narration, what stood out so immediately to you? It was just magic from the word go. I I really don't know how to explain it. Um, uh, it was a great narration. He he. I mean, it's written so well on paper. It was beautiful. I was able to visualize, uh, so much, which is rare actually. Like uh, sometimes you don't actually end up. seeing or visualizing until you're actually on the set but when the, when he was reading i was able to visualize this beautiful world that he had created you know this very period very bengali very innocent very um, just it was just stunning in my head at that point of time so and when we went on set i don't know what it was but everybody's energy was just so much in sync and everything just fell into place so beautifully 
I can't explain it. I'm sorry. I, I have no words to explain it. But yeah, everything just fell into place. <laughs> Lovely. Well, but like you said, you've just come from Iran, you know, small film, coming of age film, and suddenly you were working with these guys, the Fanbir and Sanakshi. So what brought them to mind when you were writing this? I, I was always very keen uh, um, while writing it, while making it like it, it need, this can't be the film that, that has two newcomers in it. I think coming because it's a, because it was a period film and because it was something it was kind of leaning back into say the 50s of the golden era of when you would have a Raj Kapoor and a Nargis in that world. Your biggest stars of the day were doing were doing the most interesting movies. They weren't, you know, they were doing that. And I think somewhere in my mind, I was like, no, I need, this film needs two stars. It, it cannot be made with newcomers. It can't be made with that. It needs a sense of like, the poster needs to be like something that, you know, that that's the feeling, the larger than life feeling is something that I very deliberately wanted for this film and which is why um, it was a moment in time. I think there was a moment in time. So now she had just come off Dabang Ranveer, had just come off Band Baja Bharat. I think they were both interested. And as I'm saying, like she's saying, there's people telling her not to, but I think both of them were so keen to just do something, do something interesting and nice and, and you know, just to challenge themselves. I must say, I must tell you guys that this man is a very, very brave uh, director and he is um, one of the best directors I've worked with so far in my career. For, you know, for an actor, uh, especially when you're doing a particular kind of film, you're in the same genre, uh, you're being offered the same kinds of roles. Nobody's taking that um, step, you know, to kind of picture you in a, in a way that you've never been seen before. And for an actor, that's, that's so amazing. Like imagine this person who's seen me in a Dabang, in a Rowdy Rathor, in, yeah, a Son of Sardar. Uh, being as commercial, as <laughs> quintessential Bollywood heroine as I can be and imagining me in a role like this, I think that takes a lot of guts and I'm very, very thankful that you were able to do that and not many people have done that in my career. Honestly, I can only name a few like on my fingertips. It's, it's Vikram, it's Reema Kakti and it's now Mr. Bhansali. So, very few directors in my career have envisioned me in a way that nobody's ever seen me before and I want to thank him for starting that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's truly an honor for an actor. It was the look you gave Salman and Dabang on that whole... Nice! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, this girl, like, she's the one. <laughs> but getting, going back to what you said in terms of larger than life, I guess on your level, this was not an art house film. This was a commercial film, a different kind of commercial film in a different sur. But when you wrote Pakhi, Specifically, what about that made you think of Sonakshi besides the, the bang moment? Who else? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so when okay, so you take the last leaf as, as, as the short story, right? Four page short story about this woman who's sitting in this apartment and complaining about the fact that she doesn't want to exist, and right. the painter below hears about this and says, What nonsense, what rubbish. Hmm. How can she sort of say that and decides to sort of like do this, right? That's the story, that's the key of it. Um, so when Bhavani and me were like, okay, we need to expand this into a feature film, you said, so if you take the act of painting the leaf as redemption, then therefore what is the crime? What is the, you know, what are, what are you redeeming yourself? And oh, what is yeah. that? Therefore, the background, therefore Lutera, therefore the man coming into the life, the betrayal, and then the redemption is the arc. Um, and essentially I think just to give that sense of vulnerability to character which is why the whole asthma condition which is why all those things had to kind of come in um, and I think the inspiration for that weirdly enough was Ishika who was my wife because she actually is asthmatic and allergic okay. and I've actually had to give her like literally kind of give her shots in the middle of because she has a severe allergy to um, besan and chana and that kind of stuff she can't even smell it so she has to carry vials so that was all like, I'm like, this though I know, this is, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you how to give the injection. So, um, so that was where the character kind of came from. And then while at that moment in time, while casting, I think looking at Sonakshi saying that here's someone who looks strong on the surface, who looks like she knows what, um, what she's doing. She's confident uh, and nothing can sort of like topple her. And that's what made it more interesting, actually, in a sense, is the fact that you're taking a character who's vulnerable, 
uh, but never shows their vulnerability. And and that's the thing. Like you, she seems to be perfect until uh, you find that vulnerability, and you know that that can possibly kill her at some point in time. And therefore, the redemption arc then then works. So just it fell in so beautifully with Sonakshi in the sense that she doesn't seem like someone who's frail or someone you know who's 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 ever going to be sick for a day in her life. But when that happens in the film, then you're like, oh my god, this is interesting. So. Wow, that's information to me as well. <laughs> nice, deep. Huh? She didn't rehearse though. I have to say. <laughs> that's my process, okay? My it process is work, that I have no process. We've had work. this discussion. <laughs> Stop it. So, so Vikram and me, we, we used hmm. like it took us a while to kind of uh, uh, get in sync with each other because uh, I just feel like we come from very different schools of cinema. I thought, matlab, I just started acting. Like, I, whatever I learned, I learned on the job while working on the films that I was working on. And then when I came into Lutera, it was a very different vibe altogether. So he would come and he would have chats with me. Like, he made us do readings and stuff. And I've never done a reading a day in my life before that. Like, I have not gone to any acting school, nothing. So I just literally landed up on set. And here this man starts making me do readings. I'm like, oh, wow, this is interesting, cool, fun. Okay, so we're reading. Then he's like coming to me and having these chats. And he's like, you know what? Be in the character. Just stay with the character. And I'm like, what language is this man speaking? Like, you roll the camera, na, then I'll be in the character. <laughs> Are you tell I didn't understand what he was trying to tell me at that point. Then, I mean, we started like I was, I used to be like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then suddenly I'm kick, 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 I'm laughing over there and he's getting pissed off over there. He's like, what is this emotional scene and you're laughing over there and all. Up roll the camera. And then he's seeing that suddenly I'm taking this 180 full 360 degree flip and giving him exactly what he wants as a director. So he just, I think he told someone, was it Ranveer or someone else? He's like, I don't know what she's doing. I don't know how she's doing it, but let her do what she's doing. <laughs> Yeah, Ranveer was like almost, I mean, borderline upset because he's like, he had been working on this for a month. He had been like doing rehearsals every day and he's got into character, he's got into zone. And both he and me, and she, she's actually right. It was a huge learning experience for me working with Sanakshi because it's like the first time and finally I'm like, you, I'm like, okay, you can't, there's, there's, there is no one size fits all with, with actors. And that was very clear to me from that moment saying that every actor has a different process. And you have to trust, as long as there's trust between actor and director, we'll find the process. Um, but, but yeah, and because she would do it, like she'd do a first take and I'd go and tell her like, just tweak X, Y, and Z and she'd do exactly that and take two is bang on and we're all going, amazing, let's move on. As Ranveer is like, he's like, I've, I've spent months kind of like getting into this. In yeah, he was very stuff. upset and then what about his playlists and all? Yeah, yeah. He has this playlist for like emotional, sad, uh, angry. Uh, music and all, he's got proper playlists. So whatever the scene was, he'd be like wearing his headphones and pacing and listening to that music and then he'll come and, and then he'll give his take and all. And he's like, what is she doing? Why is she getting it right? I think he was very upset. <laughs> One of the things that makes Paki so fascinating for me as a character is that she, you know, she's first uh, father's daughter more than anything. And then she's the object of Varun's love. So she's very dependent on the love of these men. I mean, she's very, she, and so she almost gets used to the affection. Yeah. You know? I think maybe that's also one of the reasons why I really connected with her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody can say that, you know, it's, it's such a uh, difficult role to play and, you know, it is so nuanced and uh, all of that, which it probably is. Mm -hmm. But for me, while, while being Paki, mm -hmm. I really didn't feel that. I think it was the most natural character that I've played on screen mm. yet. Um, just the fact that she was strong, she was vulnerable, she was, uh, she was ambitious, she had dreams and hopes. Uh, she was her father's daughter, right. uh, so am I. Mm. Um, you know, and, and she is a hopeless romantic, mm. so am I. Mm. So there were a lot of similarities between with me and Paki, which I think um, help me play her so easily. Right. Yeah. So it was just beautiful. I mean, I've been telling him since since the film came out, like, 
we have to do something again we have to do something again we have to make part 2 lutera part 2 come on let's do it i you didn't kill me so <laughs> i'm still here uh we have to do something but you know what like i said before a role like this a film like this it it's just so rare mm. like it just happens you can't I, i feel like you can't make it happen it just happens and i'm hoping that another one like this happens very very soon <laughs> Vikram is just grinning non-committedly. He's been But, grinning, like, <laughs> grinning like this for 10 years only now. <laughs> so there's one uh, very interesting scene in the film which kind of shows how you know entitled Paki feels towards affection is when the breakup scene or the rejection scene so to speak where she doesn't realize she can't even process the fact that this boy is rejecting her. So just I would like both of you to speak about that scene a little bit. I I mean I I spoke with him before that scene and mm. uh that actually turned out to be one of the most memorable scenes from from the film and and while shooting it of course i approached it like i was approaching any other scene and i remember one thing very clearly you told me he said she's a brat mm. she can't take no for an answer mm. so just uh, approach it in that way and uh, yeah i think i did and it turned out so beautiful even i was quite surprised at at what we achieved that day it was really nice <laughs> it was right really, it was terrific it was like that it, it's and there are moments i think when when Lutera in fact is one of those films where there is a lot of you when you you write with magic in your head and then you presume and you don't do this magic in your head and then sometimes it or maybe you just set your set the bar too high so you don't think magic's happening but that was one of the days when you're really like you're seeing it on the monitor and I'm seeing her perform and there's it's everything this is the way it is it's the light it's it's the way your hair there that, that you know what I mean there's all there's all that sort of stuff but just what's happening on her face mm. in that scene was spectacular and that I remember that day and it was it was again tough day in <laughs> purulia yeah. where in <laughs> like the back of beyond uh shooting um but yeah it was a really it was a it was, it was but conceptually it was important for you to have that sort of blind spot for the character to not really be able to process a moment like that 100% yeah yeah 100% i think and and like like i told us so the, the 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 there's a there's a um because paki has a certain sense of entitlement hmm. um not only is this her land but hmm. it's also the fact that you believe that this is uh it's also been going so emotionally i think everything in that moment kind of comes together for her where it is that massive blind spot where i have not been able to see what's hmm. going on um here uh so one one is that you can be and there is a moment she comes in she talks to him she goes back in the car sits down hmm. and then immediately after that she's like why am i even doing this that and that is that's pride that's entitlement that's just sheer will of whatever you know um whatever sheer power of will and and sort of like going there but uh and for me that's a that's a really interesting moment that's that's you can call it a flawed character but not really but but that is the whole kind of like sure. magic of that of that moment is the fact that you're not going to take no for an answer and get out there and you know do what you want to yeah because even though she's an intelligent character she does not realize why you know things are being taken away from them and all of that she refuses there's a lot of denial yeah. Yeah. in pakki yeah. Yeah. yeah and that denial and, and in that moment she's not going it's uh, it's this is foolishness right which mm-hmm. also come that's it's pure emotion is like that point in time you can't intellectualize anything outside it's just about pure emotion and yeah in that do i i'm it's now or never right and honestly and then, and and i and i love those moments in movies actually i love those 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 sort of sliding door moments mm. that happen in movie i think those are very very magical because yeah. like when you you're like okay if the character had driven away mm. at that moment of time what would have happened versus you know doing uh, what they're going to do and i love those i always find those to be the most you know sure. the most interesting moments in movies are always the sliding door moments so. um you uh, have this whole devanand tribute throughout the bazi tribute to be specific because you know your characters called kain singh you have character called dev a character called atmanand uh, so there's this clear thing we'll talk a little bit about that and um, why was that was this part of the reason you're making this period film was also this idea of going back golden age of cinema um so the reason the reason that that me and bhavani set uh lutera in um in when where we did set it mm. was was two things one is i i did try this sort of like modern day approach to it i went yeah. off by myself and i wrote a modern day approach and i showed it to bhavani and she threw it away mm. and she's like it's really bad um because it just it didn't for some reason i think the period element worked because when you're talking about um two people who have separated 
Mm. It's that how does anybody disappear today? It's mm. impossible to disappear. Um, I mean, you can choose to, but then you have to really go into like mm. the back of beyond. To, so therefore, the period setting made sense in the sense that if you want to actually have this love story and have it work in the way you want it to work, then it needs to be in a time when someone can just finding somebody is an, almost an impossibility. Um, so that was one. And I think, and so once we said, okay, period, then it's like, okay, where do we want to set it? And I had massive affinity for race films. Mm. Um, I'm like, oh, that environment might be kind of mm. cool. So went off on Rekis, went to look at Rajbadis all over Bengal, mm. um, found some of them. So those two kind of came together, but, uh, and then there's this third mm. sort of love for the, the golden, for Devanand especially, but just generally for the black and white movies of the era, which is, very obvious in Jubilee as well. I mean, I'm not, there. I'm not even hiding it there. It's like, it's kind of like very blatant over there. Um, but I always wanted to sort of like pay tribute to Devanand in a sense. Sure. I've always found him to be the most interesting and brave mm. of all the movie stars of that era. So someone who kind of like was going out there and was doing sort of in a weird sort of way, these, these films about society but about, but also like a super brave producer. He would produce all kinds of like cool films. And so I, I've always been a huge fan of it. So sure. somewhere or the other, it's a little pay tribute. Yeah, Kayan Singh was a particularly cool touch. <laughs> Kayan but, Singh, uh, yeah. It's good for you to clarify that Charulata is an inspiration for Paki. Because the magnifying glass uh, shot was very reminiscent of the opera glasses. That was actually very spontaneous. That wasn't, yeah. that wasn't, yeah, it but was just a moment. But the, the visual works, you know. No, no, it works, yeah. it works. And then later on, it's like, it's out of the moment. So it's a, it yeah. was in that moment, very spontaneous. Yeah, she, was, she was holding them. I'm like, it was, was not even, it was in between takes, I think. And I was just standing there. And, right. and all the property on set was so beautiful. It mm. was so unique. It was so vintage. Mm. I was messing around with things. Right. So I literally just picked up that magnifying glass. And I'm like, looking at it. And he's seen me from there. He's like, do that. <laughs> like, okay. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. No, it's just look, and then, again, that brings the, the, I think there's a goofiness to Paki's character, which is something that I think we deliberately want, I wanted to bring in, that whole playfulness of the driving the car or pouring the tea on his hand or these kind of things is that there is that, which then becomes more tragic afterwards. The fact sure. that what happened to her, what happened to that girl mm. who, who would do all these like yeah. crazy things and silly things and was such an, you know, to have that sort of what was particularly hard for you in this film? Nothing. It all just, it all just all. flowed. Yeah, we, okay. I, I was just flowing. I mean, like I said, the team was so amazing for an actor. I feel to have a team like that, to have people who um, in all the chaos can bring out the best in each and every one that's working on this film. I think it's, it's a blessing. So these guys made it so easy for me to be uh, Paki. Mm. Um, I actually don't have an answer to that. Like, what was hard? No, nothing was hard. It was it was beautiful. It was the character was sketched out for me so beautifully. I had to follow the instructions that he was giving me so beautifully. Mm. Um, it was shot beautifully. I had amazing co-actors to work with: Ranveer, um, Vikrant, everybody. Um, yeah. Bikram Da, who played my father. Oh my God, what a lovely man. Um, everybody was so just perfect for the roles that they were doing. So it was a breeze, actually. It was it was just the, one of the best experiences I've had. Super. And were you guys, I mean, um, expecting the kind of adulation the film got? Because the film was unanimously loved, right? It was one of those films that just came out and all the critics, everyone loved it. It's, it's insane. Like, like, I said, like even 10 years later, the amount of love this film is getting, I swear, I kid you not. When a person meets me for the first time, the first thing they tell me is, we loved you in Lutera. Oh my God, what a beautiful film. What a beautiful character. You were so amazing. So, I mean, that just says a lot. You know, I'm, I've done, what, some 35 odd films. <laughs> and the first, yeah, like I, I lost count midway. Could be 34, 35, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh the one film that everyone brings up without fail is Lutera. Sure. And that's, I think, such a huge achievement in itself. Like, it's amazing. Were you surprised by how the film was received? Because your first film got a lot of love. This was a different scale suddenly. So the stakes were different in that way. But the love was quite uh, from all over the place, really. It was. No, the love was, I think, um, 
I wasn't. I don't think I, I wasn't surprised. I think there's, there's. I mean, I, I've always believed that because I've, I think I've, having worked with Sanjay Bansali, for example, like once you, or even Kashyap, you know, in the sense that once you, once you know that you've put in like a lot of work into the film, and once you've seen enough of whether it's your own or other people's success and failures, and in, in, in that moment, there is um, your definition of success or your definition of of love, mm. sort of. Once you know that you've done a good job and your team has done a good job and you've put your 100% into it and everybody's kind of like worked, you know that love is going to come at some point of time. You know that it'll always be a situation. If it's not today, it'll be tomorrow. If not tomorrow, it'll be day after, but at some point of time. Mm. So, um, and a very early example of this, I remember, was was when uh, Sanjay made Kamoshi and mm. it didn't work. And he was pretty distraught about the entire fact, but it was also incredible that after doing that, mm. the next film he's making, is Hamdul Dechu Ke Sanam with Salman Ajay and Aishwarya in a moment when all three of them are really, right. you know, peaking. Uh, he gets to work with the music director of his choice after working with Jatin Lalit and giving an art and, and gets a producer who says, I don't care what you're making, I just want to make a film with you. Mm. And you, and that was a moment when you're like, it, you know, it, at that point in time, it's like when people see just good work and just passion, um, I think that just counts for so much more and eventually it will come. So I think and, and by that time in my life, I was like, okay, whether whatever happens, mm. I think once you've worked hard enough and, and everybody's worked hard enough, I think. Super. No, and which is interesting because, um, you know, it's the, the short story is about a photorealistic leaf, right? That's, that's what it comes down to. But the main difference, I think, is that uh, in O. Henry's short story, it is an artist who's doing it. Here, this is a guy who's kind of faking it till he makes it, right? He's trying to trying to impress her, trying to teach her art. We start by seeing him, you know, daubing green on a canvas. He doesn't know how to paint a leaf, but uh, he he's, gets there. He's that. also an artist, con artist. Yes, a con artist, absolutely. <laughs> so, Vikram, is your point that if you work hard enough and sincerely enough, that your art will eventually be great? Does great motive equal great art? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> about Varun painting. I don't know about how much great art there is. But there's, I mean, in the end of the day, there's, there is great, there is that his passion for doing it. Sort of like right. it transcends just the fact of, oh, I want to make a great painting to I'm going to actually save somebody's life with my painting. I mm. think that motivation is in itself great art. Whether yeah, the leaf itself. He knew itself, his audience. Yeah, I have that leaf at home. It's one of the things I've actually sort of like kept okay. and it's not a very good, <laughs> it's, it's really badly painted. <laughs> And that's one of the, I made Ranveer actually sort of like do it the first day he came to Dallas and like, you paint his leaf. He's like, you're serious? I'm like, no, no one from our, you're going to paint it yourself. So he sat diligently yeah. for an hour <laughs> and he made that leaf and it became this little, that became his masterpiece. Right. You know, which and is, then uh, you decided I need a lot of snow to save this moment. <laughs> so it's in the distance, it's kind of silhouetted, you can't really see it. <laughs>